Hers in just one reaction, this is, is our world broken? But <laughs> just in a nutshell, yeah. I guess Kuzgazad and his team basically just sat around thinking like, wait a minute. Uh, we made all type of videos, we haven't tackled where the world doesn't make sense. Why does one thing happen and suddenly there's a disruption, right? Uh, I've seen certain, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, philosophers and physicists slash whatever talk about this, like how all this is a case, right? Uh, how something just makes sense and suddenly there's some kind of a disruption, let's just say. Something happened and suddenly like something just like changes everything, right? Through the history, you can see events like that, right? And I would say this is human nature, right? Uh, locally, human nature is kind of different than like uh, at larger scale in group and collective groupness, right? So I think it's just human nature. But yeah, this is like an interesting question, right? Uh, the randomness even kind of have a pattern. In, in which pattern? Like everything goes fine, suddenly there's a disruption. That's the pattern. Like, why is that the case? I guess that's what this is going to be about. Is our world broken? But yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is from Kuzgazad. Remember, if you like my next one, subscribe so that way I know which videos react to more. Uh, if you haven't seen other Kuzgazad reaction I did, just check out the link in the description or in the end card. And let's watch it. The 12,025 calendar is here. Get it. Sells out. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a sneak peek of this year's very special edition. Being a human in the 21st century often feels frustrating. We're clearly at the high point of our species, never have so many of us lived so well, been so healthy and well off. At the same time, life is incredibly hard. More than 15,000 children died yesterday. 700 million people live in extreme poverty. Even within rich societies, there's loads of unfairness and daily struggle. We are divided, unable to solve our problems while creating new ones, destroying our world in the process. In many ways, the vibe is that we live in dark times. It's so easy to feel disconnected and powerless in the face of problems too big to solve. And so the state of the world fills many of us with doom, hopelessness and sadness. We feel it too. It's one of the most pervasive stories of our time and there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah, I don't know if it's just OCD or what, but I sometimes think about that a lot. Like, how there are really, like, insanely rich people out there who never use the money they have. Their children, of, and their children like, generation and generation after won't probably use that level of money and resources. And at the same time, they're, like, just, like, few yards away. There might be somebody who can't even afford a simple burger or some, like, some small food just to survive and starve right maybe the, you know like uh, you know that doesn't apply everywhere or something but yeah it's it's the case of, even in the rich cities that's the case around the world in america and everywhere right uh, so it, i think about that a lot like why are as humans we like that now somebody will say that's not my uh, responsibility that's not how society work right when you really sit down and think about like how our society is functioning what it is mean to have a government a country a state a law right uh, how everybody benefits each other. There would be no rich people if like people weren't social and didn't help each other out, right? If everybody had to fend for themselves, everybody would be just surviving, right? Uh, but people are smart and they sometimes like create things, but they need other people to do that. That's how society works, right? Uh, you, you can just like, it's not my problem. That's not how society works ever, right? But we are like that, like if I, if I don't, it's, it's like if I don't see it, it's not a problem type of way. People just don't think about it. Right, and you think like, what is it for me? All right, uh, throughout the you know years we've seen like anybody who comes out of poverty, any place, any group of people, even a country, when they rise out of poverty even a bit, many creative people comes out of it, and those creative people can sometimes like contribute in a way that will help economy, other people, entire globe in certain way. Who knows? Maybe if you help certain you know impoverished people who can't even afford food are worried about survival, can't even think about going to the hospital because they don't have the money. If like people like that rise out of their poverty, who knows, maybe somebody will like be ingenious enough to like uh, solve some kind of problem like global warming or something. You can never know, right? Uh, you know, people like Faraday and you know, like uh, Faraday, yeah. There are many scientists who's like instrumental, right? Uh, who was like, you know, working in some kind of a coal mine or like working for somebody. I'm pretty sure Faraday is the one, right? Who was like that? shoveling, uh, you know, coal or whatever in the basement while figuring shit out, right? I'm pretty sure it's Faraday, am I mistaken? I don't know, like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Faraday. So there's many people who just, like, have created ridiculous things and, like, things that change the world out of really bad condition. 
So rising, if, if people are not worried about survival, who knows what kind of creative, so it's, it's for you, right? So what is it in for me? Like it might, so it might, there might be somebody who like help you in the future, help society, make you even more richer. So it's really surprising that sometimes like people who like can just throw away a certain million dollars and won't even notice like, yeah, I just lost million, who cares? And there are people who can't even afford simple food and people are fine. Like societies don't care about helping each other, right? Creating Medicare, you feel Medicaid and Medicare, whatever, everywhere basically. And people just run to the like uh, Senate, like, oh, why, why, why would I use my tax money to help somebody this and that? Like, that's the problem, right? I don't know. But as Terry Pratchett said, we are the storytelling ape. We think in narratives and live in a network of stories that make up our world. So without minimizing the darkness, we want to add a story that we find helpful for dealing with the world. This is subjective and not a science video, so you don't need to buy into it. Our story begins with the first moment that ever was. 14 billion years ago, time and space began from some kind of state of pure energy. From this very first moment, the universe grew and evolved. Things that were one became many. Energy turned into forces and particles. Out of chaos emerged the laws of nature. From these ingredients, stars arose, gigantic engines turning simple stuff into complex stuff only to die violently and spread the new complexity around. Out of this more complex stuff, new stars and more worlds emerged, repeating the cycle until most of the simple stuff was used up and most stars that will ever be born had been born. And then, on one planet where the conditions were just right, dead particles and molecules combined to make another jump in complexity. Maybe the laws that govern everything were destined to make life happen. Maybe it was just a cosmic dice throw. But life, now the most complex thing in existence, wasted no time and spread to even the tiniest corners. For billions of years, cells held on, fighting against the elements and each other, evolving in the process, until one day they came together and made another jump in complexity to plants, animals and fungi. First in the oceans, then on the land. Earth was now the stage of something grand, a complexity acceleration machine going at full speed. Millions of new species emerged and vanished. Life was beaten down over and over, but every time it came back stronger, resettling niches filled with corpses of the ones that came before. Most of these beings are hidden in time forever. We only know their faint echoes. Until a few million years ago, an animal looked at the night sky. It looked at its hands. It saw its reflection in a puddle, and it realized it existed, that it was alive, here and now. You probably had such a moment as a small child, mundane and majestic at the same time. This is where the... Do you remember that? Because I don't, right? There are certain things you think is like really fundamental and it will strike you, but it's not... Because as a child, like things strike us a lot, so it just like muddies over the memory. But yeah, when you first time you realize, wait a minute, what does it mean to be alive? Wait a minute, I can see my reflection. Like shit like that doesn't, you don't remember really. But yeah, as a kid, like, yeah, that's surprising shit. And you know, when he said like, you know, maybe like life on earth is just a dice throw. And yeah, that's true, right? It, but you know, if you look out of telescope, right? All the best telescope we have, you'd see supernova happening every single time, right? Multiples, it's like, you know, blink, 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 like fireworks, right? Even those supernovas are rare because that's how big world is, right? It, it's, it, our mind can't comprehend how big the universe is, right? Even the observable, or later on beyond observers, observable universe, right? So th that whole, th you know, like life might be rare, but being rare isn't rare on the universe. That's how big universe is. So people are like, oh, then life must be really hard because it's really rare like that. Yeah, but rare in which way? Because that rarity might itself might not be rare. It's like, oh, there's going to be a rare eclipse here. Yeah, but there's going to be rare eclipse every few years because that's how eclipses work, right? Every time you hear in news, like there's a rare eclipse this time that didn't happen for like 100 years, 200 years. Yeah, but one and a half year from now, some eclipse will happen somewhere that also didn't happen for 100 years. It's, every eclipse is different. So rarity itself might be that, not that rare. The human story begins about 6 million years ago with the hominids still just another animal among many others. They split into many families and lineages evolving further or disappearing again. But for some reason, their evolutionary niche enabled their brains to grow and they learned more about this strange world. They prayed to the stars, they tamed fire and turned stones into tools. 
they celebrated and cried together. Life was hard and brutally short, but together they endured, probably by telling themselves stories about the world. For almost 250,000 generations, they built a biological foundation. And then at some point 200,000 years or about 10,000 generations ago, they became us. Humanity had arrived. Our ancestors didn't waste any time. Their world was still hard and unforgiving, but out of pure stubbornness, they didn't accept that. They wanted their lives to be better, so they made better tools and learned to preserve their knowledge beyond death. Progress started slow, and then suddenly they, or better, we, made the planet our own. Agriculture and the first villages and temples snowballed into civilization. Kingdoms and empires, technology, writing, astronomy, medicine, philosophy. A hot second later, science, industrialization, the modern world, the information age where we are today. Earth is truly ours now. We changed it in ways unfathomable a few short generations ago. We turned the land into fields worked by millions of machines, built thousands of gigantic jungles made of sand and metal. We split the atom and traveled to other worlds. Everything is different today. Except us, of course. We humans have not changed. We were molded by a cold and unforgiving world where we needed to be hard and brutal to survive. We are still bound to our nature that made us so successful. We still tell stories, are hungry for food, greedy for resources, desperate to be accepted by our peers. We're scared by the dangers that lurk in the dark, imagined and real ones. We're still brutal to each other and the animals we hold power over. We're still territorial and possessive, we fear losing what we have, and we fear change. We downplay the damage we... Yeah, we are in the middle phases of this. Uh, there will be a time where this won't apply. I don't know how long after this, millions of years, who the fuck knows. But we will evolve into something different because even though we will live in this kind of a leisure world, Whatever world you can think of, like, even if you're surviving barely, that's leisure compared to the caveman times, right? That was, yeah, you, you could die literally any time. You might even starve because you have to hunt for food. You constantly have to be on the move. That's why I was, I mean, people stamina is shit. Even the, like, <laughs> what is it, David Goggins, whatever, they're like, you don't know me, son. Yeah, even that stamina is not that great compared to the, how great stamina of caveman were. Because they had to be, they had to run. Uh, they, they will sweat and everything just so they can like out, outrun a lot of things, right? So in today's world, it's a leisure world. Like we, we live in a somewhat luxury and the old things that we still carry on, the, you know, like cumin DNA, use, slowly that will basically become silent, right? A lot of things that basically um, makes us like, uh, you know, like how, you, you know, man can just like, uh, we can just work out one hour a day, right? For a few days a week and you get jacked. That will go away because it's still our like body still remembers that like, oh, he needs to be strong for physical activities. Yeah, what physical activity, right? Most people don't do any physical activity in the real world. So over time, like humans will become like sm slimmer, smaller, not taller, but slimmer and things like that, right? Brains might become, start to become bigger and bigger because we use our brain more than before, right? So humans will look different, right? Our like, you know, bush, you know, like he said, moves like, oh my God, there's a lion behind that. Not really. We won't like, oh, it's bush is moving. What's happening there? People will be like that, right? People will change. Cause and ignore the people in need outside our tribes. Humans are not nice. And if we look at our history, how could we expect ourselves to be? In nature, we see great beauty, but also endless violence and struggle devoid of morals or kindness. We are an instinct-driven apex predator that survived in an uncaring world. Only now we have coal plants, nuclear weapons, and social media. This would be hard to handle for any animal, so it makes sense that we continue to follow the impulses so deeply ingrained in us. But this is only because we've not yet caught up with the mind-numbing gift we've been handed. The real tragedy of humanity today is that we are these amazingly powerful beings that have not awoken to their potential. We're trapped in the present and the mindset of a scarce world. But aside from the physical limits of the universe, there's nothing stopping us from creating a literal paradise for ourselves. Yeah, it has to start with education, basically videos like Kuzler. I'm glad this channel has 23 million subscribers are one of the biggest channel on YouTube. People need to be like scientifically literate. First, that's the layer because that will teach you how to think when you approach some information approaches you. If you, if you don't have that, you will take everything wrongly or there's a chance you might not uh, understand the situation completely and like go into some different track, right? That's the biggest issue. 
right? Uh, most of the congresses and senators of our, our different governments around the world are not scientifically literate. That's the problem, right? So they always make some weird decision that doesn't feel great, right? In USA, uh, they were about to make like a super collider, right? But they basically like, you know, uh, uh, squash the idea and throw it up. It was, it was about to be the biggest collider on the planet, even still. But they didn't do it. And now they did that in, you know, like, uh, you know, Europe did that in Fran uh, Switzerland, right? Yeah, pretty sure, right? So uh, super colliding, super collider. I'm pretty sure that was the name of it in Texas. They, they were supposed to be even bigger than, you know, th there is in Switzerland. Uh, so, yeah, but people like, oh, why do I care about this? Like, you don't know where this is going, right? You, you need to understand broader picture. You need to understand science, right? Uh, when uh, Einstein came and, like, gave all this, like, E equals MC square, right, quantum world, uh, he didn't know, like, where this was going to lead. People didn't know that, right? And, like, it led to, like, microchips and computers, 60 plus percent of world's global economy basically tied to that. And yeah, also like well, moralities and stuff, human DNA, right? Like that's all uh, lying around. Like I said in the start of the video, why should I have some, help somebody? Like it's not my problem. But the point here is, the main point I want to say, I just, you know, was that like people sometimes is cold to something because they don't want to think about it and they can just ignore it. But I've seen many scenarios in, you know, wars and things where governments have to like play their own people. Like, why this war is necessary? Because people and their morality would come in the way. So it's not like people are completely evil, right? Even in the British Empire, you can hear about like how people just duping their own British people and hide atrocities so they don't reward. Like, why are you doing this, that to that people? That's not proper, you know? So people, you know, like in general are not immoral, right? They're not bad people. Even in the USA, in the Vietnam War, this war, governments have to constantly like, use some kind of propaganda to convince people, like, oh, this is good, this is good, we need this. Otherwise, people will be like, why the fuck are you doing war? And that any, happened anyway. War is not good and all that, all that movement and shit, right? So people are not amoral, but people can ignore things. People want to ignore things. And because of social media and internet, that's not that easy, right? So people are getting depressed and depressed because they come up with situations that they can't really handle or solve and they get depressed, right? They put in charge uh, people in government who are not doing anything. So it's just like, you know, th things are becoming worse and worse. And there comes a point where like, okay, you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't want to feel like this. So they just basically shut down everything. Like, I don't think, fuck it. I don't care. I don't care who's suffering where. I don't think about it because they just, they just become defeatist. Like, I can't do nothing about it. I don't think about it. This seems so daft, but it's true. If we dare to tell ourselves a different story, about who we are and who we could be. Humans throughout history felt like they would witness the apocalypse, and this feels especially true today, but you're probably not living in the end times. There's a solid chance that humanity will persist for thousands, maybe millions of years. If this might be the very start of our history, what can we dream? Well, humanity will survive, that's for damn sure. That's not even a question. I don't believe humanity will die, and up, die out because there are certain traits we have is really survivalist. We can do really unspeakable things just for survival if time comes. So I, I don't, if nuclear apocalypse does come, there will be people who survive over time. All those like fantasy fictional world you see of like fallout and all the different things that people like are post-apocalyptic, that will be true. People will find a way to survive. But what, what, what will be left? Would they be like, uh, you know, like same as us? So be completely different type of people, who knows? Dream of achieving. Just like our very first ancestors six million years ago, we may be the ancestors of another 250,000 generations of people. But while the hominins found themselves powerless in a world they had to adapt to, our starting conditions could not be more different. It's like we got handed a safe file of a game where others put in millions of hours of work and where we can decide what game we want to play in the future. The world is still horrible, and it's also the best world that's ever existed and we can make it so much better. An optimistic person living in the year 1924. That is another problem. Newton once said, like, I can see further than everybody else because I stood on the shoulders of the giants. Basically, people who came before him were smart. Newton didn't basically try to, like, do all the science from the start to, the, to that point. He would have died out before he could finish it. So in today's world, I see they're like, oh, by the way, world is flat. Why? Because I don't believe scientists. I don't believe doctors. I don't believe 
like this one thing to be skeptical and you know not like i won't believe anything everybody's lying every data is wrong are you gonna do all the science from the scratch because there is such thing as emergence everybody's lying then where are the results coming from where are the technologies coming from oh by the way everything's a lie everything's a secret uh, there is something else at play here you can go to the moon it's like if you if you start to create some kind of a fictional world that feels like fiction it's a fiction right like skepticism is different than just like saying everything's a lie and not believing in results right technology all this is a lie right all scientists are lying that, that, that's a stupid would not believe the progress we've made in just a century how much we reduced poverty how many diseases we cured how much free time we have what kind of luxuries are ordinary to us what technological wonders we take for granted how few of us die in war how many live in a democracy and today we might very well be gearing up for a jump like our ancestors 10,000 years ago when agriculture changed everything for everybody from AI possibly transforming the information age to biotechnology enabling us to manipulate the language of life itself to new sustainable ways of harvesting the energy we crave. If we start thinking in decades and centuries, it's perfectly reasonable that we'll solve our problems. We can eliminate poverty, maybe all material needs, defeat all diseases, maybe even death itself. We have the potential to restore balance to the climate and heal the planet again. We may be able to adapt to the information age and make lasting peace. None of this is guaranteed and it will be hard and full of failure and setbacks. Some things will get worse before they get. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about at the start of the video, disruption, right? Things are slowly getting better. It's just true. It's the stats. Nobody's lying there. How, you know, how fast is getting better? Who the fuck knows? In Africa, countries are rising up, right? Their GDPs are rising up. Like fastest growing countries are in Africa now. All this shit is happening and now wars are popping up. See the disruption? You think that, wait a minute, it's like people are realizing we live in a modern world, right? Uh, things are getting better slowly. We are becoming technology and advanced. We might move to Mars one day. Oh, everything's getting better. Wars are the things of past, at least, right? Uh, there are small pockets of the world that, that just do war because of some history and some religious reason, who the fuck knows. But it's becoming things of the past. People are rising out of poverty. Oh, look at that. Things are looking good. Oh, by the way, now, even in Europe, there's a war. In Middle East, again, it's just sparked up like, no, like, you know, long time, right? Multiple decades before, you know, like Israel, Lebanon, like with multiple countries at war now. Iran, U.S. warned Iran not to, Iran not to launch missiles. They still did it. Is U.S. going to like respond? This is all turning into shit, right? At a global stage, it's all turning into shit. So this is the disruption I was talking about right and how does this affect everything it will affect global economy if it affects global economy the people who are rising out of poverty they will they'll be the first to hit because that's how economy work they'll be the first to get screwed and they're like their growth will like stunt right and yeah, yeah this disruptions right things starts to get better disruption and back to again up and down up and down that's how shit is going every time get better we'll run up against our nature over and over again but if we manage to clean up our act, we could create a world better than we dare hope for. You get to do that. You get to live in a world that's deeply flawed, but also the best it ever was. And you get the opportunity to make it better. A world with the smallest amount of suffering possible that fits our nature and inspires us to be the best version of ourselves. It's time. Let's reveal the 1,025 yeah, people, go to original video page from there, support this channel, get the calendar. It's a really awesome channel. If there's one channel you should su support, as you know, like, biggest science fan, I don't know what that even means. What do you mean by science fan? It's science. But yeah, Koska is a great channel. And yeah, things are getting better, right? Let's not get that wrong, right? We hear about, that's the thing. We hear about problems more now than before because we have internet and everybody's connected. Problem was still there, but there were way too many problems before. That's for damn sure. So the world is getting better. Crimes are getting lower. Doesn't matter how much fear mongering people do, right? In news and everywhere. So that is definitely true. In wars, you know, entire civilizations, yeah, you know, entire social groups used to be, you know, like eliminated because uh, somebody conquered some place, they kill everyone. So there is no threat type of way. So shit like that didn't even happen in world wars. World war numbers are ridiculous. But it would have been even more worse if like the same type of doctrine that people used to do if they implemented there. But no, there's such thing as war crimes and things. So yeah, and there were like countries get together and created more treaties and shit. 
So people are getting better, right? Things are getting better. That's for damn sure. He was like, if I had a time machine, I would go back at this time. No, I would not go back in any time. Doesn't matter how glorious time you think of. Because even the human, you know, human rights and liberty might not be the thing back then, right? Every time you walk around in your city and everywhere, you think like, surely by just cursing at somebody or saying something, I'm not, nothing's going to happen to me. Most of the countries are like that to, in today's world. Doesn't matter how glorified world you might think of of the past, that might not be true. You say something wrong and off to the, your head is just off, right? Go to the chopping block. There you go. So I would not go back in any time. But yeah, things are getting better. But it's like disruptions are there, uh, you know, like, yeah, pe people are getting richer, but others are getting real, you know, like poor, some people, right? Uh, things are not keeping up, like divide is becoming kind of bigger. People need to figure out how economies work, how future is going to work. People need to figure out, like, we need to help out if we can to poor people. So poverty can be eliminated. If poverty gets eliminated, who knows what's going to come out. It might be just overall good for society and to me. Somebody might come out and make me even more richer if they're not thinking about surviving all the time. So it's for people's benefit, personal benefit, everything. But people need to understand all these things. But yeah. Right, well, if you like my channel, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.